Hello, everybody. This is Helena Hart, and I'm here with my very good friend and fellow coach, Adrian Everhart, for the first live stream ever on my YouTube channel. I can't believe it. Welcome, Adrian. <laughs> Hi, Helena. I'm so happy to be with you for a live stream. We normally record our videos, so it's so great to be here. This is going to be so much fun. For those of you who aren't familiar with Adrian, I'm sure you already know Adrian, right? She has an amazing channel here on YouTube. She's a feminine energy dating and relationship coach, and she's also the author of 500 Ways to Talk to a Man, an amazing ebook. We've also done some programs together. You can uh, check out the description of this video at any time if you'd like to go check those out. And today we're talking about something really important. We're going to be sharing seven secrets that get a man to pursue you for a serious serious, committed relationship. These are some things that he just can't resist. We're going to be talking about feminine softness that drives men wild, one of our favorite topics. And Adrian is the perfect person to bring on and talk about this. She's a total Aww. expert and genius, as I'm sure a lot of you already know. So Adrian, let's get started. Is there anything you want to say before jumping in, or should we just start with these seven secrets? Well, I'm so excited. I'm just really ready to go. I'm honored to be on your channel. It's it's such a great privilege to just share this knowledge with women. Thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone who's in this live stream and showing up today. I really encourage you take notes throughout this video mm -hmm. because this is not a video where we're just gonna tell you some things that you have heard many times before. We're not only gonna tell you what these feminine softness, this feminine energy secrets are, but how you can implement them into your life right now, today, whatever your situation. So be sure you just take some notes and stick around. Yes, absolutely. We already have 100 people watching in the first minute, so we know you guys are going to love this topic. And type all your questions in the live chat, Adrian. Since this is our first one, I'll just whenever I'm looking around, I'm checking out the comments, looking at the okay. time and everything. So um, we will get to your questions at the end, as many as we can. I'll pop them on the screen. But let's get through these seven secrets, Adrian. I'm so excited. What's the first one you have to share? Well, the first thing I want to share with everyone is just how men and women do commitment and relationships so differently. Mm -hmm. So I just want to kind of start there because that still seems to be um, a little confusion about that with, with masculine and feminine energy. So remember, masculine energy is naturally pursuing feminine energy. But if a girl is in her masculine energy, she actually ends up pursuing the man, which kind of pushes him away. And we can do this in a lot of different ways. We're going to discuss them in the tips. But the first thing I want to talk about is that women tend to go all in pretty quick. We meet a man, we go on a few dates, and we're already realizing this is the guy of our dreams. We just go all in, we get over invested pretty quickly. I have spoken to my clients who have gone on and on about guys that they haven't even met yet. They haven't even gone on a date with them yet. So I just keep, want everyone to keep over investment in the back of their minds. This is one of the things that just kicks you off. It is the wrong start off into your feminine energy. It's finding yourself over invested because a man really likes to pursue a woman. He's not as emotional in the beginning. He uh, wants to initiate the conversation. There's a little bit of him wanting to kind of chase you and pursue you on a very innate level. And uh, we're not talking about like doing anything, you know, like ignoring him and things like this, you mm -hmm. know, you want to be there, you want to be active, but just remember men and women, the whole thing behind feminine and masculine energy is just naturally, we are very different energies. And for this strong attraction to be there for him to want to chase you and just him be wild about you, you know, uh, for that to exist, there has to be that polarity between the masculine and feminine energy. Absolutely. So I just wanted to cover that first to get everybody on board with what we're talking yeah. about with feminine energy. I'm so glad you brought that up. If you're familiar with our videos, you know, mine and Adrian's as well on YouTube, you know, we're all about feminine energy, leaning back, not chasing a man. Of course, you want to respond and show interest and be warm and soft and open. We'll be talking about that in some of these other their secrets, but very important that you're not like pushing your out your energy out towards a man constantly. Mm. We've all been there, right? So you can feel yeah. the difference when you're just constantly <laughs> trying to do stuff. Like <laughs> I'm going to text him this because this is going to get some kind of response. I'm hoping, right? You can feel it when you have an agenda, when you're leaning forward and trying to make something happen constantly with a man. So um, I'm just looking at the chat as you were talking. Sounds like everyone is really resonating with this topic. So I'm yeah. super excited right. to hear the rest. 
to these secrets. Is there anything else you want to say about that one? No, I'm ready to jump right in with number one. Can I go ahead and get Absolutely, started? Absolutely, yeah. Okay, great. So I have a very popular ebook called 500 Ways to Talk to a Man. One of the reasons this ebook is so popular is because I discuss things like texting, communication, what we, how we communicate nowadays. You do have some interpersonal, you know, face-to-face -face communication, but so much of our communication takes place over texting and sometimes even email. And just, I want to share with you feminine softness via texting. <laughs> how does this work? So I'm going to give you a few quick ones on that. There's a lot more in my book, but the first one is when a man says, hi, what's up? Or how's it going? He's really asking, how's your day? He's really mm -hmm. asking, he's making a bid to want to know what are you feeling inside your body? They'll never say that to you, but there's, there's an interest in you that they're wanting to escape into that feminine energy world with you. So one of the greatest things you can do is go ahead and have prepared what am I feeling today? What did I feel today that felt wonderful? Because mm -hmm. we don't want to share with someone our pain story right out of the gate. We want to share something soft and wonderful. Like I, I took a walk at, you know, my lunch break and the breeze was just blowing through my hair and it felt so nice and cool outside or whatever it may be. You're giving him an experience. You're feeling inside your body. Okay, you're sharing a feeling. Number two, you want to keep it short, just as short as you can. You don't want to overshare. It never fails. My clients send me, you know, their blocks of text or they're over at I Heart Love Academy, my Facebook group, and they're writing these massive blocks of text. And the guy is just writing back these, you know, mm -hmm. one or two sentences, oh, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so I always tell everyone, cut it in half cut it in half, cut it in half again. And you just really want to learn how to communicate with less words because men get flooded. They get emotionally flooded with too much information, too much words. Whereas I have probably already said a thousand words at this point and you're with every one of them, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. We women can just talk endlessly and jump from topic to topic. I believe yeah. we talked about this in our last video on how to make a man think about you nonstop. Yes. It's a, men can just, um, I think you even gave an example uh, from your husband, Jeff, who's, who will say like, wait, what are we talking about again? <laughs> men get flooded yeah. when, when we're just like, you know, almost like vomiting all our words and we can all tend to do this. <laughs> right. So I love yeah. that. Cut it in half, yeah. cut it in half again. Amazing. Keep, keep, keep on cutting. Yeah. Now, here's the <laughs> big one. Recently, I made a, a little meme about this and it went just crazy on my website. And that was you sometimes need to just let the text sit there. Mm -hmm. You need it to let it sit there. So I'm always talking about the sperm and the egg in relation to masculine and feminine energy. The egg does just sit there and the sperm finds its way. Ultimately, the egg chooses the sperm. But even with a text, this is a, you know, a great way to segue into that. A man might send you a, a text that says something like, well, that sounds really good. It, sh it should be a lot of fun. Okay. There's no question. There's mm -hmm. nothing he's asking you per se. Just let it sit there. Just let it sit there. Let him have that last word and allow that space to be there for the man to pursue. These are all feminine ways to text, communicate with the man you like. I'm like trying not to laugh over here because we've all been there. It can be so hard. That was the hardest thing for me personally, just letting it sit there, not trying to like keep the conversation going and grasp, even if you can feel that he's, you know, maybe going to sleep or getting busy with something, letting it sit there, not as a game or some sort of strategy. Like I'm just going to you know, let him sweat it out, but just, you know, you don't have to constantly, um, you know, be throwing your energy back. If he didn't ask you a question, I love that. Let him have the last word that can do wonders. Yeah. Amazing. Do you have any tips yeah. for women who have a hard time? I know for myself, especially in my past, this was probably the hardest one for me. Uh, any tips on what to do, maybe taking your focus off of that phone and that guy or anything like that? Uh, turn your phone off as much as you can. Turn your phone off, put your phone down, say what you need to say, read someone's response, tap your heart, send them love, and go about your wonderful, amazing, fabulous, feminine energy life. You know, and just get all of that interest and focus over investment off that man. How do we end up so over invested in guys? It's up here. 
We're thinking mm-hmm. and thinking mm-hmm. and planning and planning and calling our girlfriends and da, 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 lots of conversation and thoughts about the guy. That's how we actually get over invested is that we're thinking about that person too much. So get back into your life. I don't want to skip ahead because that's kind of one of the points. But Oh, awesome. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. I just want to say hi to everyone in the chat. People are so connecting with this. Beach Girl says, oh, oh my God, I do that with my boyfriend all the time. <laughs> so good. So brilliant. Uh, this is great, you guys. I'm loving, loving all these comments. We have 300 <laughs> people watching live already in the Ooh, first 10 minutes. I love minutes, that so. feeling, Steven. It yes. so good on my skin. Yeah. So good. So good. All right. What, what do we have next for us? I'm so excited for the rest of these secrets. I'm loving <laughs> these first ones already. Well, you know, remember feminine softness is something that you have authentically inside of you. Um, even, even men, to some degree, they have a feminine energy, a very softness to them. Um, the problem is, is that women somewhere in our growing up, we... Uh, begin to shut that soft part down and become very hard, become very intellectual, very logical in order to survive or get reward. Most people's families do not reward them for being emotional. Um, Most, you know, even in medical field, I've heard that people often don't know how to respond when someone's being really emotional. It's just something that a lot of us, you think we would be wired to to deal with it, but we're not. And I don't know if it's been a cultural thing that's happened throughout the years. I'm sure there's many debates about that, but what happens is we lose touch with our feelings and therefore we lose touch with our truth and your truth and your feelings and what you want and what you don't want, what you like and dislike boundaries is also known as vulnerability. And vulnerability is the most honest work you'll ever do in feminine energy. You cannot let this one slip past you and pretend that you're not feeling or noticing or observing what's really happening to you. Now, a lot of you might go, okay, I can pick out a, a, you know, a lot of things wrong with my guy or a lot of things wrong with this situation. And I can share that with him. Is that really vulnerability? Well, not really because that's about him. And Mm -hmm. vulnerability is about you. You have to learn how to tap into that feminine softness and speak from a place that this is what I'm experiencing in my body. You know, this is what I'm feeling instead of like, you know, you're making me feel crazy when you don't call me or whatever it may be. You can just say, you know, I'm feeling really lonely. I'm feeling really isolated. or I'm feeling a little scared about our relationship right now. That's about you. And it's a vulnerability. It's what you want. It's what you're feeling. And here's the kicker. You have to do it knowing you can be rejected for it. The person that you're with may reject you when Mm. you're vulnerable, but that's part of it. That's part of it. That's the honest, honest part of feminine energy work is do you want to be with someone who's going to reject you because you're honest about how you feel? You know, vulnerability is a very, very powerful uh, commitment maker and bond maker with a, with a man. It's very powerful. It's so true. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Uh, but I'm getting distracted by the sweet comments over here. People saying <laughs> we saved their love life, and you guys are so sweet. Oh my gosh! Um, we love you guys so much. If you guys have a hard time with vulnerability, we mm-hmm. talk so much about this in our dating unzip collection. Yes. You can go here and have the uh, the link right here, everheartcoaching.com/unzipped. I believe it's in find and keep the one without coming undone, a program we did together. Also heartbroken to happily ever after. We're bundling both of those together right now at a special Mm -hmm. sale price. If you guys want to go check that out, the link is in the description. Also, Adrian's ebook is in there. We talk so much about how to do that because it can be hard, right? I mean, we, like you said, we've been conditioned to not feel. I was watching one of your videos the other day, Adrian. I don't think I told you this. And you told this amazing story about when you were a child and I think you kind of fell down and skinned your knee and you got rewarded for for not crying, for holding back tears. And your parents said, wow, you're so brave, right? And so these things like that, I can, uh, I almost started crying when I watched that because I have countless stories like that. We get rewarded for suppressing what we're actually feeling And then we bring that into our adulthood, the way we relate to men or really all people. Mm -hmm. So it can be really, really tough. But if you guys have a hard time with that, I would recommend checking out our programs because we give you kind of step by steps in how to do that in a way that doesn't like shock your system and and activate all your defenses. Right. 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 Yeah. Because it is deeper work. It is like advanced work. And that's why we created that program is we had so many women who needed this advanced work. So you can study at home. It comes with 
a full VIP library. You can take your time and go over this material. You know, there's only so much we can give you uh, in YouTube videos. You know, we're a little li limited on time, mm -hmm. but that's why we created these two programs. One of them definitely goes very deep into vulnerability. In fact, it was what we focused the whole program about. Absolutely. I, I love yeah. this. Uh, being vulnerable using feeling statements. Help me and my guy become as close as we are. You're so oh, welcome. Oh my gosh. I great. mean, there's just comment after comment like this. You guys are going to like make me cry. I can't go. <laughs> we'll go through them all after. So, so sweet. But we love you guys so much. There's um, so many people, over 330 people watching live already in the first 15 minutes. Ooh, so we are make like. Make sure and give us thumbs up. Yes. You I'm like loving it. all your questions too. So we will get I to as many of those at the end. Um, but yeah, go check out our programs. Links to everything is in the description. Um, I love everything you shared about vulnerability, Adrian. I know we could do a whole live stream just on that. <laughs> if you guys would be interested yeah, in that sometime, let us know down below in the comments. Um, what, what's the next secret? So the next one is really fun. This is where you get to have fun with your inner girl. And remember your inner girl's inside of you. My inner girl was inside of me when I fell down at the zoo and she's still with me now, you know, years later, she doesn't go away. It's just about reconnecting with her and getting back in touch with her. And so this is an exercise that I really love to practice with my husband. And so daily allow him to fall in love with you. Now, mm. To each of you, that may mean something different, but I'm guessing when I say daily, allow him to fall in love with you, something kind of comes to you, some feeling or some essence or some quality uh, of, of some attribute you have kind of will naturally surface, you know, and for me, the answer I usually get when I want, you know, daily, I'm falling in love daily, we're keeping this connection going, we're working on it. Remember, our relationship is something that you must work on every day. Uh, even Helena and I, we have all of these wonderful tools, we have to work at it, we have to mm -hmm. practice, we mm -hmm. still have to do this every day. And so daily, let him fall in love with you, to me means listening to my partner, you know, being open, being available for him, asking open-ended questions, uh, not directing him, not solving problems for him. So for everyone is kind of individual, what your partner, what you feel, what you sense inside of you that your partner is going to need to just daily fall in love with you, feel that love every day, have that as a mantra. That is Beautiful. I love that. Again, we can probably do a whole nother video just on each one of these secrets. So if you guys have requests for any more live streams, let us know. We're also getting some work done on the house. So hopefully that isn't too loud. I'm a little nervous about that, but Sunny, the link to the, um, so the bundle program is in the description. So close the live chat, click the little upside down triangle next to the title. You'll see the link to the program. It's ever, or you can just type in everheartcoaching.com slash unzipped. So um, thank you guys yes. so much. So sweet. We, we love you all so much. And just for the sake of time, are you ready to move on to the next one? Or is there anything else I'm, you wanted to say I'm on that one? I'm all set. Um, the next one is the pursuer distancer model. This is yes. something that we talk about. And remember the distancer, there's a distancer and a pursuer. And basically a man usually ends up being the distancer. And the more we pursue him, we get into this like sense of urgency and we have these urges like, I need to call him now. I need to fix this right now. Like this is happening mm -hmm. and it feels very, very urgent. And Helena, mm -hmm. I know you're a pro at diagnosing and turning around urgent urgency because you taught me yeah. you taught me about it let's not forget that but the <laughs> more that <laughs> the more that you're urgent a lot of people don't know helena was my coach mm -hmm. years ago mm -hmm. so um but the more that you're in that state of urgency and like anxiety you're going to pursue your guy and then the more he's going to feel like i i need more time alone you need to give me some space i need some time to think because the heat is on you know the heat is on him and so you know google pursuer distancer this model was created years ago by a wonderful psychologist and um dr john gottman has done a lot of work on it so just pursue that be aware of these behaviors what you're doing and just see how they apply to feminine energy and masculine energy mm -hmm. see if you see those qu qualities in yourself because soft feminine energy 
doesn't really have to do anything to get love, attention, cuddles, texts, phone calls, proposals, flowers, <laughs> anything like this. Like you really don't have to do anything when you are an invitation to the man. So and true. Mm -hmm. I'm like kind of laughing over here again because I you say I'm good great at diagnosing urgency. I I yes, you recognize are. it because I was like the most urgent person. I can still get into that. You guys know I have I'm impatient. I want things to happen right now. But you know we can all do <laughs> that, right? So I've really found your. Uh, when your masculine energy is going unemployed or unutilized in your own life, it can be easy to turn it on to a man or all the men who are showing up by trying to constantly make something happen, tracking the connection very closely. Oh my gosh, he didn't text back for three hours, right? Um, anytime you're feeling urgent, that's a big clue. What is your masculine energy doing? Where is it not being utilized in your own life and kind of getting all used up? So then when a man shows up, you can be in your feminine energy. You can be displaying that softness and warmth that we're talking about during this live stream. So there's a little tip. If you start to feel your masculine energy go urgent, it's typically running you by fear. And the solution is getting that masculine energy, doing something meaningful in yourself, in your own life. You don't want to squash it down. You want to get it working, get it in gear for yourself. So you're yeah. creating that space to be in your soft feminine energy when you're with a man. Oh. So important. Oh, I love it. And mm -hmm. that brings me right to the next tip here, which is mystery. You have to have this mystery about you. And I'm not saying like go create some mystery, some fake mystery around you. You want it to be authentic, real mystery because my husband doesn't often know what I'm up to. You know, um, I have a lot of little hobbies. I have a lot of little things I like to do. Sometimes I'll just decide to go take a yoga class in the park or go for a quick bike ride or something. And this keeps that mystery alive, you know, and you want to have this rich, full, juicy life because it is actually biological, biologically necessary for a man to miss you, uh -huh. to have that attraction. He has to have time away from you to miss you. And if you're always there, you're always available, it won't happen. It so just, true. It, and it's not that he's a bad guy. This is biology that does this not his fault. <laughs> Love that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Can you hear that noise in the background, by the way, Adrian? Oh, a I'm little paranoid bit. paranoid about that. A little bit, but it went away. So A little bit. Okay. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Okay, good. Hopefully it doesn't go on for too much. I think it's a lot louder here than, than is coming across. Hopefully you can't hear it as loud as I can. Um, wasn't expecting for that to happen today. Okay. Okay, great. So yeah, I love what you said. I think mystery combined with the safety, right? This creating safety that you're that safe space for a man to come towards, not another obligation or just something that he wants to pull away from when he gets stressed combined with this mystery. It's kind of like safety yeah. and thrills, right? Familiarity and a little unfamiliarity. That combination is like the most addictive, powerful thing in the world, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> and, that is um, what makes him crazy about you. Exactly. Yes. So yes. Thrill, safety and thrills. You heard it from Helena. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And and I can maybe feel a little bit like, oh, well, that's like, that's really, that's a lot to keep in mind. Why well, we have to be warm and we have to be mysterious. But this becomes like second nature where you're just naturally lean back. You're naturally not focused on a man. And then when he shows up, you can just be warm and open because you're not pissed off because your focus wasn't on him so intently. Like, where was he? What took him yeah. so long? You're just like, it's a nice surprise when he does show up. Very attractive energy. Uh, very kind of um, magnetic place to come from. Right, Adrian? Yeah. Yeah. And, and it does become more natural. Like you have, you know, said many times it's a muscle that we have to keep working and flexing and it takes a long time to rediscover your inner girl. It takes a while to discover this inner softness. But when you even watch a video like this or take one of our programs and you get that, you know, focus and that study into this, you will begin to see change very, very quickly, very quickly. You know, there's even just having this in your mindset, just having it in your energy, you'll start to see change very quickly with the man. 
Totally. I love this. And it sounds like this is resonating with everyone. I love it. Watched phone never rings. Totally agree. <laughs> you, uh, the minute you truly authentically take your focus off of a man, that's when he calls. That's when you get a text from him. It feels like magic, but it's not. It's There's an energetic kind of pathway between the two of you. And if it's full of all this resistance, because you don't have your own stuff going on in your own life and you're all focused on him, he can feel that. And so when you take your focus off of him and have a little mystery, all these things Adrian's talking about, it really energetically creates that space. I know you guys have all experienced that, right? So awesome. I love, this is amazing, Adrian. Love all these tips. What's, what's the next thing you have to share? Okay, so the next one is that niceness does not win love. So I thought, you know, when I first started discovering feminine energy, I was like, I need to be nice. I need mm -hmm. to be feminine. And it's it's really nothing like out of a Jane Austen novel or what we might perceive of, you know, 18th century English literature. Niceness does not win a man's attention and affection. Your vulnerability does. Being real, being honest, you're someone that he kind of really can't you know, it's not that you want to always keep him guessing, but you're you're not out to win a popularity contest. You're not coming from a place of desperation. You're not being nice to be a doormat, you see. And so niceness is something that you can be naturally. You can be naturally positive. You can focus definitely on what's positive and what's good and what's working. But these this on purpose nice you're giving to get, you're doing something to be nice, you're cooking him dinner, you're spending money you don't have on clothes or makeup or something like this in order to win his affection. So that sort of niceness gets you nowhere, gets mm. you nowhere. In fact, he can, again, smell it miles away that you just become this, you know, kind of you're, you're fluffy to him. You're not real. You're not authentic. And if you're not real and you're not authentic, he can't trust you. He can't fully commit to you. Love that, that. Love that. Yeah. We're getting some, some great comments and questions about that. Somebody asked it just, there's so many, it just keeps uh, popping up because there's so many comments coming through. How can you be warm when you're mad at him? And that is exactly what That's Adrian's talking one. about. Yeah. Perfect mm -hmm. question for this, Mary. And there's a lot just like this. Uh, yeah. It's not about being sweet and understanding. If something he's doing doesn't feel good, then there's something to talk about there. And it's not about um, just accepting whatever he does and he can come and go as he pleases and you're just going to be warm and open. It's not about that. It's about being authentic to yourself. So if you feel triggered, if you're feeling angry, having the confidence to say that, like something about this just doesn't feel good. Is there something I should know? Mm, my situations, favorite. right? But just yes. if, if a man is kind of like stepping over your boundaries, you don't want to just accept him back in without having a conversation about it. So it's really important. I love that. Nice doesn't get, it's not about being sweet and understanding when he's not mm -hmm. acting right. Right, Adrian? Yeah. Exactly. And how can you be warm? Well, warmth and niceness are, for me, are two different things. You know, um, you know, nice is, is, is who I am by default. Warmth is something I have to practice a little bit. But warmth is just this warm, inviting energy. Come to me as you are. I'm not going to judge you. I'm not going to pop off on you and begin to, you know, discipline you or or rage on you or, or lecture you. I'm warm. I'm open. I'm here for you again, ladies. Walk away with this. Be an invitation to the man. Be an invitation for his love to come towards you. So yeah. true. So true. Did that answer your question? I know there's a lot of people asking, you know, what's the line between soft and warm and nice. So hopefully that answered it to me. That was crystal clear. That was awesome. Thank you for the 199, Nancy. So you're so sweet. If you have a question for us, let us know. I'll bump it up to the top. So, all right. What else? I'm getting distracted by these questions over here. There's so many. We have 415 people watching. This is probably the most live viewers I've ever had. So I know everyone's Yay. a huge fan of you, Adrian, myself included. I'm like your number one fan. <laughs> so uh, I am I'm loving yours. this. I am loving this. So yeah, what anything, what, what else do we have for us? What number are we on? I'm getting lost in so all of these. We're, we're actually at the last one, which That's is right. really, it's something I touched on in the beginning and I wanted to save it for last just because we go all in. 
we go all in and we get all of our focus, like laser focused on this guy, laser focused on outcome, how it's supposed to be, how it's supposed to turn out. And all of that is masculine, masculine energy. It's wanting an outcome. It's doing things to create an outcome. It's saying things to manifest your own outcome. And I don't talk about law of attraction manifesting, but you know, you're being manipulative. You're going all in to get your way. And what happens when you go all in? You lose all the cards you're holding. Mm -hmm. You lose anything you're holding and you actually will lose your identity. You think that you're doing something good for your relationship by always being there and having meeting him right at the door with a hug and a kiss and answering his text immediately and always being available and ready to go and having dinner cooked and whatever it may be. And you're all in, but you're really losing you. You know, you're losing you. And the great thing about feminine energy and that softness that a man craves is that it it isn't predictable. It isn't predictable, but it is warm. It is inviting. It feels comfortable. Ladies, all day long, the, the man is out there in a world where he is working. He's competing with other men for muscles, money, who's got the fastest car, all these things that like we don't really we're not really in that world. We're in a much more emotional world. And so when he comes home to you, he doesn't want to be with his boss or his manager. Now, I just saw questions come up. It says, but what if you enjoy cooking? If you enjoy mm -hmm. cooking, cook for you. You're yeah. cooking for you to make you happy. If the man happens to also enjoy it, great. Just make sure he's buying some of those ingredients once in a while. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Love it. Yes. Love the idea of focusing my own masculine energy on projects rather than the relationship. It creates the space for my feminine energy. Absolutely, Ophelia. That's exactly what we're talking about. So I think that's good. I mean, you can, I can feel the energy of going all in. Like, I mean, who hasn't been there, right? I mean, we've all been there. This, you know, yeah. I'm going all in. This is, I'm putting all my eggs in this basket. I don't feel if I'm going to be okay if the man makes some decision. I might be devastated. You, it's the job of your own masculine energy, in my opinion, to not get yourself to this place where your self-esteem and your mood and your emotional state is hinging on what a man is doing or not doing. So important, yeah. right? That's oh like what gosh. really creates the safety for your feminine energy to like, you know, have free run of the place and, and yeah. be there, and breathe and express herself. She has to feel safe. And it's the job of your own masculine energy to create that safety for her by sticking to your boundaries, not putting yourself in situations where deep down, you know, you're going to get hurt. Right. So, so mm -hmm. important. Yeah. Love mm -hmm. that one, Adrian. I love it. Yeah. It's good Absolutely. Fun. Yeah. Anything else you want to say or should I scroll up to the top and get to some of these questions? I want to get to questions. I think we've said everything. I hope everybody made notes. And remember, girls, if you want to go deeper and you want to go uh, deeper with Helena and myself, it's at everheartcoaching.com slash unzipped. It's two different classes. You also get a library full of documents that Helena and I both created and just to supplement your learning and really go deeper with this process. Don't hide it from yourself. Learn more. Uh, you know, I always tell everybody, don't try to, you know, duct tape it together on the internet. Just, you know, whoever you decide to take a class or course with, just keep learning more. That's how we do this. I continue to read and read and read and read everything I can to help me mm -hmm. keep my energy more mm -hmm. centered. Yeah. Me too. Absolutely. All right. Just scrolling to the top as you were talking. Here's a great question. I get questions like this all the time. It irritates her when her boyfriend doesn't message her every day. How do I deal with it? Um, <laughs> I feel like you have I some don't great mean to laugh. Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling you have some great, great tips around that, Adrian. Well, um, I would first start with what does that irritation mean for you? What is mm -hmm. that irritation about for you? Um, in most cases, it is usually control. We want to control something. We want to have a specific outcome. And why do we want to control something? Because we have fear. And the fear is that this person is not, uh, you know, contacting me every day. Therefore, I'm irritated. I want to control him. If only he would do what I want him to do, then I would be okay. I wouldn't be scared. So you see how this goes round and round, okay? So be aware of that chunk of it. The other part is of it is 
you're in a committed relationship with this guy and you have something called the terms and agreements. Yeah. The term and agreements, yes, and Helena, again, great teacher for this. The terms and agreements mean, okay, we are committed. What does that mean? How often do we communicate? How often do we date? When do we go out of town together? You know, do your kids, do our kids get to get together or can we get separate babysitters and go have time alone? What does it mean and how often? So if you sign a contract mm -hmm. to work at a company, you have a contract that clearly lists out your duties and your responsibilities. And that's a little bit about what the terms and conditions are. So you may need to go over the terms and conditions with him again and just let him know, you know, I'm feeling like we're kind of, you know, I'm feeling a little bit, we're not on the same page with the relationship and we go days without making contact and, and touching base with each other. And I'm curious how you feel about it, kind of get his feedback. He might say something like, oh, I feel too overwhelmed. I feel like I have to talk to you every day to let you know I love you or something like this. Mm -hmm. And just give that a little time to sink in and see where either you're trying to control him or do you really need that contact every day because you know it's more important than a text message um, every day. That's him actually coming over to your house, spending time with you, you guys having quality time together. That's where the relationship exactly. is. Make yep. sure you're having that. Yeah, that's the magic is in the the being together in person, right? So don't get too hung up on these things. If the you know over you know if you're seeing him five times a week, does it does he really you know? It's all about what feels good to you. You have to find your own your own yeah. sweet spot. Um, I just want to put this question up here because Adrian is also the creator of the ABCs to get him back. That's your absolute best chances mm -hmm. to get a man back, right? Um, yeah. Any advice for someone in this situation? It's been a couple months. You haven't heard from an ex. You were the one reaching out in between uh, the months and he goes distant. I know you're the total expert yeah. at getting back together. So any tips there? So... One of the things that I get you to focus on in the ABCs to get him back and why something like this is so frustrating is that you were doing the work for the guy. Hmm. And, and you ultimately need to ask yourself, do I really want to do the work for him? If I have to stay on him, if I have to be the one that reaches out to him, do I really want to do the work for this man? Just ask yourself that honestly. Most cases, women will say no. They will say, I do not want to do the work. But one of the things I get you to do in the ABCs that gives you the absolute best chances to get back together is that you go back to focusing on your life because somewhere in this, you've lost yourself. Yeah. Now, I also believe that if you kind of feel it's not over, you two are usually not over. Mm -hmm. There's usually something else there. And so instead of lying awake at night, years later, wondering what if, um, you know, you can find out, you can find out how to do this. But uh, if it's been a couple of months and you were the one reaching out, but he's just still more distant, ultimately, sometimes you have to accept a guy's no. And you just have to accept that it's just, it's just not where he's at. And you have to boldly, bravely walk a path that I have walked Helena has walked and millions of people throughout history have mm -hmm. walked as well, which is we have to move on from someone we really identified as a loving, wonderful partner. And it is the most terrible thing. But here's the great news. Mm -hmm. I am yet to see a situation where you don't end up in a better circumstance or a more fulfilling, wonderful relationship, having learned from that person and moved on every time i've talked about the artist so true the guy that oh my god before, so I true. Thought he was yeah i thought he could walk on water and then i meet jeff and i'm like what was i thinking about this guy you know so you you totally. get what i'm saying right yeah. Elena? oh my god yes we've all been there it was like why did i hang in there so long right once you break free and truly make yourself available to, to what's meant for you where these kinds of things the right guy is not going to get distant for months and months and months so um i saw similar question like that also yo you're so sweet Aww. you're so welcome Thank you um so much. Darlene, what if he insists that he wants you to call and text also for a year and a half we've been going around about this i do not want to call or text first sometimes that leaves one or two month gaps. Wow. Um, well, let's let's take the, 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 there's a problem. If there's one or two month gaps, if this yeah. is some guy, that's not dating to me. Um, if let's, let's just see this, uh, let's take this first part. Cause I hear this all the time. The man wants her to call and text sometimes. Any thoughts there, Adrian? 
Um, yeah, if you are in a committed relationship where things are going good and you're seeing each other on the regular and he's part of your life and you're part of his life, absolutely reach out to him uh, with feeling statements, send a few texts, you know, with how you feel, initiate it, but make it instead of just like, hey, what's up? Um, you make it uh, you make it a little bit more about like, hey, here's what I'm feeling, you know, and things like that. This is what's going on with me today. How are you? You know, it's not just a fat at communication. You're connecting with his heart. That is feminine softness. Beautiful. Love this feeling statement from Tamara. I get so excited whenever we connect. It feels amazing in my body. Ooh. Love that. Oh my God. <laughs> I love you guys so much. I love that it, people think this should be taught in school. <laughs> um, what about this yeah. question from Kimberly? I've been seeing a guy for a year. I haven't heard from him for two weeks. I had major surgery two weeks ago. Haven't seen or heard from him at all, but he checks my Snapchat. That sounds like a red flag to me. Um, I know there were some other questions in there about you know men not reaching out, but checking social media. Mm -hmm. We actually did a whole video on that, on how to yeah, uh, you know, be in your I feminine think, energy on social media. Isn't it, isn't it your number one video or a number two or three video it's in your happening. list right now? Uh, it might be. So just search for our yeah. names and social media <laughs> and it'll pop up. I get them all confused. There's been, we've it done literally dozens and dozens of videos together. So it's so much fun. But yeah, we have a thing on social media. But I would say if you've been seeing a guy for a year, you had surgery, you haven't heard from him in two weeks, something's, something's not right there. Something's not right. Right? What would you recommend she do? Well, I mean, I think it's as wonderful as it is that he's checking your Snapchat. <laughs> You know, I mean, he's curious about you, clearly. Um, I do not like that this guy bailed on you after having major surgery. God bless. I hope you are okay. Yeah. I hope you're healing because, uh, you know, going through that sort of emotional stress on top of healing from surgery is a very cruel uh, thing. I mean, in fact, I'm quite the opposite. If someone I love goes through surgery, I'm there even more. Now, don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. I think a lot of men shut down when things get a little scary. It can happen, especially around surgery or illness or things like this. But if you've been seeing him for a year, here's the biggest thing that, that I, I, I'm feeling. Are you in a committed relationship? Because I don't want you to date someone for a year. And this is what Helena and I talk about in... Um, you know, dating unzipped and things yeah. like that. There's like, there's dating, like I'm dating you and I'm quantum dating some other men as well. There's that, there's like, we are gonna be exclusive and we're just gonna see where this goes. We're gonna, you know, do it for a little while. But if you've been kind of just dating him for a year, that's, that's like kind of the bigger problem because that is how men, I mean, begin to see us as low quality. There's yeah. no other way to say it. Is that we'll hang around, mm -hmm. right? Could get comfortable yeah. yeah yeah whereas where what reason would he have to to change something he's got yeah. you kind of waiting for him i'm hoping you're not just like waiting around but and he doesn't have to make a commitment there's no reason for him to make a decision there so yeah My i would get advice, in touch with what is it that you know what is it that would feel good to you yeah, and my best advice don't do any snapchats for like two or three weeks and see if he doesn't reach out ah <laughs> uh, Love it. Yes. Go watch our video on uh, social media. If you guys, I can link it too. If you guys have, Ooh, wow. oh my gosh, we love you too. You know, this is the first time, this is the first time we've been live. That's probably the, probably the first time you've What's seen us live problem, for some Elena? reason. I can't believe I think we have so much fun pre-recording because we laugh we and we have to edit out us go. cracking up and the yeah. bloopers. Um, yeah. great question. I, Lauren asked a little earlier, does vulnerability, here, on, here it is. Does vulnerability, like I miss you cause pressure. And here's a related question. What do you, how to stay feminine when you get rejected by voicing your feelings? Phenomenal. Mm -hmm. So I, I love saying I miss you. I miss connecting. I miss us. You know, mm -hmm. I miss, I miss all that warmth. The, uh, saying I miss you to someone doesn't hurt any, anything at all. Um, in, in fact, you're being vulnerable, you may get rejected. He may say, that's cool. He might not, you know, offer it back. Now you know, exactly. now you know you're with a time waster. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? I'm imagining that wouldn't feel good. The answers are in your body. When you listen to your body, your emotions will tell you exactly what you need to know. 
So true. So, so true. And when you get rejected by voicing your feelings, it, that's it right there. He's giving you all the information you need. If you, you know, the point of using feeling statements that Adrian and I talk, Adrian and I talk about is not to like steer things in a certain direction or get a man to do what you want. It's right. to see what he does with that information. Does yeah. he seem to want to take your feelings into account? Does he care that you're feeling a certain way or not? That is all the info you need right there. It's a, it's a, it's a good amount of information you need in, in terms of like, is this going to be a good partner? Right. So if you definitely, get, I mean, it feels bad. I didn't mean to yeah, cut you off. Sorry. I mean, <laughs> you're you're reading my mind. It feels bad. Yeah. But, it feels really bad. And we, we will all yeah. experience it, but you've just been given, you know, a ticket or a pass that says, don't waste your time anymore exactly. with this person but it's it's always an opportunity to grow i feel like i feel like any type of rejection is an opportunity to not run from that feeling but embrace it and find out more about your inner girl don't Love just that. don't don't be like my parents at the zoo who rewarded me for stuffing it down yeah, right? totally <laughs> embrace totally. it great question from tamra what do i do to get this guy to connect with me more any thoughts there ah, ah well um you know don't think about him. <laughs> Date mm. lots of other guys and do not think about him and move on with your fabulous, wonderful life. I do believe that men can feel that and sense that. In fact, I saw several people in the comments saying that they really learned that when they invested in their own life. Look, my husband, a lot of people don't know, but in the ABCs to get him back, I talk about, you know, my situation with Jeff and it was months and he had asked me to be friends. And I said, I've always been your friend. I can't be just friends. Mm -hmm. um, that's a script out of my book, 500 Ways to Talk to a Man. But I finally woke up one Sunday morning and um, we had been apart for many months and I wanted to paint. And I was gonna do all these things that day. And I was in my little nightshirt and the doorbell rings. And it was Jeff at my door wanting to claim me, asking me to marry him. So it's like really when you do reach that point, like someone said earlier, a watch phone does not ring. Mm -hmm. It's the same with your life. The more you put into your life, it will emanate around you. That energy will change around you. And the man, the right man will come forward. So true. So, so true. Love this uh, comment from Layla. Um, her husband will be married for 10 years. Fourth of July 24th. So great. You're very welcome. You're so yeah. welcome. Oh my gosh. This is for the over 450 people watching live. Give this video a like. Give us thumbs up. Yes. Guys. We love to know we're doing a good job. Yes. We love to get your thumbs up. It sounds like everyone wants a uh, live stream on vulnerability. <laughs> um, yeah. Let's see. I'm just reading these for the first time when I pop them up here. He communicates via Insta story. I feel he sends mixed signals how to tell him I'm interested in a feminine way. He's scared to ask me out. Um, we don't, I don't think we like this guy for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the big problem is, is there's not communication. Yeah. So in Helena, in our program, I hate to like keep harping on the program, but we teach you how to date. We teach you how to like have the the texting a little bit and then have the phone call because if he keeps coming around and keeps coming around it's pretty much a date you know it's some form of like i want to connect with you i want to connect with you but the more that you allow him to do that and just stick around and be his friend and be nice the less he's going to you know see you as a long-term potential for a loving real lasting relationship you are a high quality woman you do not need to you know, play words with friends with someone for months before they ask you out. You know, it, you don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. Totally. Great uh, question from Brittany. My boyfriend and I are taking space. He often says he feels like I could take, take it or leave it. I think she says, um, would he see me as a pursuer if I reached out to make up since normally he thinks I'm not interested? Hmm. <laughs> well, Brittany, my question to you is, could you take it or leave it? If he's hmm. feeling that way, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of sensing. Um, but you know what? I, I feel like you've done something wrong. If you have done something wrong that you need to apologize for, I think that's always a good thing to do. But I have a rule, and it is he who speaks first loses. Hmm. And, and, I, and I firmly believe this. That if you are not in the wrong, he who speaks first loses. And by loses, I mean 
you become the one in the more vulnerable place, you see. Now, you might think, oh, well, Adrian, don't you want us to be vulnerable? But I'm talking about connecting vulnerability. I'm talking about I'm putting in effort and pursuit. So let the man speak first, not you. Mm -hmm. Or you become the one in that pursuit energy. Totally, totally. Next one from um, Sahar. In my case, he's been divorced four years. Don't know how to understand him. He's older than me, had the wrong doubt. Something about this doesn't sound right to me. Here's more from the last uh -huh. how attractive. Never met in person. Yes, this is what we were talking about in the first secret. Yeah, I knew something about this didn't sound right. Um, yeah, if you've never met in person, you feel your energy all over him. How do I make him talk to me? How do I attract him with my words? It's you're pushing forward, pushing forward. It's you not say a phone call would feel lovely. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Exactly. Exactly. And if the guy gives you excuses, you talk to him one more time and you go, oh my God, this has felt so good. I've had such a great time. A phone call would feel lovely. What do you think? And if he gives you another excuse, block him. He's married. Exactly. He's married, Love he's it. He's lying to you or he's somebody tricking you or catfishing you. Get that energy out of your life, girls. You do not have to be so desperate to talk to someone you've never met in person. Oh know? my God. So Sorry. true. Everyone rewind that. <laughs> I think that is so, so true. Okay. Let's see. There are so many. Um, let's see. Allow him to fall in love with you daily by asking open-ended questions. How to do this without masculine leading energy? Well, if you're, if you're, I'm going to ask this question to make him fall in love with me. Like, I hate to say it, but that is masculine right. energy. That's results oriented. I'm going to apply this technique to get this result. That's, that is masculine energy versus I'm curious about him. And I'm going to ask a question because that feels good to me. And I'm really curious. I want this feels good connecting. So it's all about where you're coming from. That's a very feminine energy place to come from. But if you're, I'm going to ask these 10 questions to make him fall in love. It just doesn't work like that. Right. Lord knows I've tried and it yeah. did not work. <laughs> this is so much fun. Oh my gosh. This is like, I love doing this with you, Adrian. This is great. Okay. Um, yes. So good. A lot of people starting over, you know, in their sixties and beyond starting over, um, dating. So I'm so glad mm -hmm. this is helpful. Yeah, it's wonderful. Okay, here's another one. We had a great time, great intimacy, not sex, but he didn't ask me out again. Two weeks silence now. What is going on? I don't know what date this was for you. It sounds like it was early stages, but the right guy is not going to let you get away. He's not going to let you slip through his fingers and, and just right. he's not going to jeopardize his opportunity to be with you. So if this That's is right. like before the first few months, just let him go. In my opinion, That's Adrian... Right. Oh my God, did I have it bad once for a guy who kept telling me he'd call me? I mean, I got a friend to call his house. I mean, this is years ago. I got a friend to call his house to make sure he was still alive and all this stuff. A man will move mountains to be with you. And and if and if you know, we have to get rid of time wasters. We have to get these guys out of our life that aren't working out so the right guy can come in. If if you're if you're you know, if you're dance card is full of Mr. Wrongs. How can Mr. Right come your way? You know? So true. So, so true. Okay. Let's see. I feel like we have gotten through a lot of these. Um, love this. I love these little um, mini testimonials. For, oops. Why is this not Thank popping you. on my screen I've now? I've been seeing them too. There we it's go. Crazy. My husband uploaded. Unload yeah. Hugged him and said, thank you. Just showed him a little appreciation or attention. He said he filled up. He lit up and has been doing them the last couple mornings. Love that Yay. so much. Oh my gosh. Girl, that is feminine yep. softness. That is like, oh, this is so sweet. And I feel so special. And, and you know, or, or like you look sexy bending over into the dishwasher like that. You know, you're able to be soft and cute and sweet and guys love it. They really, really love feeling that connection with our hearts. So keep up the good love work, that. Jayla. Yes, yes, yes. Um, this is a great question from Ariana. I believe you have a bunch of videos on your channel about what to do during this time. If you're right, how to keep your life full during quarantine. Anything you have to say on that, Adrian? You know, I've personally been doing a lot of online classes and just keeping, you know, working on different aspects of myself. You can, I, I'm assuming you're single because you, 
you can date online and have Skype dates online. You can actually do that or, or sorry, Zoom. Uh, nobody uses Skype anymore, <laughs> but Zoom, <laughs> Zoom online and have a date. Um, if it's possible to meet in a public you know, area with the safety, with the distance that everyone has to be doing right now to stay safe, do it. But as much as you can, this time is where you can ready your home, ready your heart for this man. Now, in our program, the Unzipped Collection, we have a document in the VIP library that tells you how to get your house ready for a man. And it has some tips in there, like some feng shui tips on uh, cleaning out space, cleaning out drawers, having a table by your bed. So the man, when the man appears, you create that space for him and he will appear. He will absolutely appear. So now's a good time. We have this time at home. Clear things out. Clear your space. Clear your energy. Create space for that man in your home. He will arrive. Yeah, love it. Uh, related question from Fatima. She's single um, during the pandemic. Don't know where guys can find me. She feels hopeless. She works from home. Um, a lot of people in that situation. Any tips there? Do you have any videos you could direct them to? If you, I know I've seen videos on your on your channel on this. Yes. And so, again, I don't know if you're able to online date right now. Um, there are a lot of steps and processes before you actually meet someone to go on a date. Mm -hmm. All right. And remember, all of this is practice from the first hello to hey, what's up to hey, cutie, hey, sweetie. And you just got triggered because he called you a sweet name. There's so much practice for you right now. But here's the honest truth. Look, we're we're in a pandemic right now. The good news is all pandemics end. Is it going to be easy for everybody right now? No. No, it isn't. But the thing is is that we it will end. We will be at this better place. So be true to yourself, keep educating yourself, read everything you can, practice with what men you can practice with receiving arrows, but for a lot of us right now, it will feel lonely. You know, this is this is part of slowing down our energy. This is part of my opinion. The world is slowly becoming a feminine energy world instead of a masculine energy world. Um, and we had to all massively slow down and get in touch right. with our feelings with no other option because we're at home looking at the same four walls. You know, yeah. we are having to embrace what we feel and not panic and run from it but embrace it. So if I were you and I have absolutely been there, that wounded part that is feeling so hopeless, I want you to love her. I want you to be with her and see if you can't strengthen that relationship that you're having within yourself. And also get positive. You know, uh, Helena and I, we are both big fans of law of attraction. Look, I've got, uh, you know, I've got this book. Oh, right here, love. Yes. And, yeah. and every, every day I reference it and I want you to just be able to get yourself a really positive mantra such as, you know, the right man is out there for me. And every day he's getting closer and closer. Ooh, I can feel it. And I want you to imagine how it's going to feel. That is one of the best things you can do. So right there, you start to shift your energy into something more positive instead of I feel hopeless. The man yes. is so, around you, so he's near yeah. you, he's coming to you. Think about how exciting and wonderful. He's on his way, he's on his way. Just keep telling yourself that. Love that so much, so, so much. So something, the sound and the, the little, the connection might be a little off. Seems like it's okay now. Um, yeah, I think we're back. But hopefully, hopefully it was just me that saw that and not you guys. What about this one from Sunny? How do you peel your energy off of him if you're in a relationship and you don't feel he's attentive enough? I'm trying not to nag, but I need want more attention. I would ask, what do you have going on in your own life? Right? What do you have like what projects are you working on? Are you know, like what's going on in your work life? What do you do after work? Can you get outside and walk? And like I would fill up your schedule. Like actually, I like having a written schedule. I'm the only person that still has a written schedule, but <laughs> fill up your schedule and your life. Um, so you're not, you don't just have these big empty spaces where you're, you know, focused on what he's not doing. Adrian, mm. any tip for someone in a relationship wanting to pull their energy off of a man? Well, you're exactly right. It's, it's always up to you, but here's the thing. 
Uh, you can have a guy who's kind of stonewalling, kind of shutting down, pulling away, withdrawing from you. And I always, you know, I, I kind of go to seek to understand before you're understood. And mm -hmm. this would be a great way to just open up some of that feminine softness and just say, hey, honey, you know, I feel like, it, you know, I miss snuggling and I miss cuddling up and it always feels so good to have your arms around me. And I'm curious how you feel, you know, and get him to open up because something's probably going on with him. Now, the other thing, the follow up to that is whenever I don't feel whenever I'm blaming my partner for something and I'm saying there's something my partner's doing. I always look to myself and go, where am I not giving, where can I give myself more attention? Mm -hmm. Where am I not being attentive enough for me? Where am I resisting, you know, needing and wanting more, but I'm not giving it to myself? Like, where is that happening? So have that conversation with yourself. I think those are some good tips to get you yeah. off on the right track with your guy. Yeah, definitely. Let us know how it goes too. I just started dating a guy who's going back home to work remotely for five weeks. He actually seemed genuine. We met on a dating app. Is this relationship doomed? Go back to the beginning of this where you don't go all in. We don't know. I mean, five weeks is five weeks. Don't invest in him. Oh my gosh. I just wrote a newsletter about how before I met my partner now, I kept meeting these men who, who would have kept me waiting. One's going on a long trip. One was traveling for work. One was going back home for three weeks. So you don't want to invest and um, wait for him. Keep doing your thing. If he's the right guy, when he comes back, things will pick back up. Um, what I mean, if, if he communicates with you during the time he's away, great. Be open, respond, but don't overinvest until you guys can actually like have a regular dating in-person yeah. relationship. Yeah. Make him one of your quantum dating five. You know, yeah. he might be the number three or number four right now because he's so far away, but he's just someone else that you're dating. He's someone else you're practicing on. Yeah. Um, here's one from Anya. We'll wrap up soon because we just came to the top of the hours, went by so fast. What's your opinion on trying to manifest an ex? Is it holding you back from moving on? Great question. Sometimes it is. Absolutely. Depends on the situation. Adrian, you're the expert in, in reconnecting a relationship. What are your thoughts there? So in the ABCs to get him back, I gave you three months. I'm like, three mm, months, you it. will get a sign. You will know. You will have something happen. I kid you not. When Jeff came back into my life, it was three days before the three months was up. But even before then, the guy might start showing up a little bit, you know. So he here's the unfortunate thing is that we can sometimes create imaginary relationships mm -hmm. or fantasy relationships as a way to protect ourselves. And it's actually protecting us from intimacy is the more we stay in love with this fictional, not not fictional person, but that fictional relationship, because if the man really wanted to be there, he would. He absolutely would. So here's what I get everyone to ask yourself to first clean your energy. We got to clean your energy up. And that is the way this ex is right now, the way he's showing up right now in your life as he is, whatever he's doing or not doing is that really your dream relationship mm. because that's what you're telling the universe that you want so if you're telling the universe i love him i want to be with him and he's a man that's distance doesn't call you and doesn't connect with you and and you know kind of walked out of the relationship you're telling the universe that's what you want so you're better off to take the positive traits that you felt from him you know like maybe he loved to make you scramble eggs in the morning or he would rub your feet or you liked how he made love to you or you know whatever it may be so you want to get in touch with the aspects that felt good and that's what you want to focus on manifesting it may come back in the form of that man or it may come in the form of a new man to drop another program on you. I have one called new man manifesto, but Helena and I also talk about this and unzip uh, yeah. quite a bit. Yeah. Quite a bit. Yeah. absolutely. Yes. Yes. Um, loving all these comments. I was just trying to maybe pick one or two more before we close out. Um, let's see. How is it possible to feel so much chemistry with a man, have such a great time with him when he really does not care about me? Oh, gosh. Mm. Uh, for Wow, 500 people watching live, by the way. It's the most live Ooh. viewers I think I've ever had. We love you guys so much. Give us I thumbs it. up, you guys. Yeah, I just noticed that. I was getting lost in these comments. Um, there's so much that could be going on here. I guess from my perspective, your subconscious mind 
is creating this spark of attraction and chemistry with the kind of man who feels familiar. So I'd be curious mm -hmm. in your past, did you have to work hard to get your parents or caretakers love? Did, did, were they a little critical of you? Were they hard on you? And then you internalized it and became hard on yourself. You're attracting, uh, you know, you can feel your subconscious is creating chemistry and attraction likely with the type of man who feels familiar. So if you didn't feel cared about in your childhood, that's what's happening. Your subconscious doesn't make decisions about, well, this is good and this is bad. This is healthy. This is unhealthy. Your prefrontal cortex is what makes those kinds of judgments. Your subconscious doesn't do that. Your subconscious just goes, you've survived this. You can handle this, <laughs> right? It's so committed to homeostasis and survival. It's like, you've yeah. survived this and you're still alive. So here's, it's just wanting to keep you in this little box to keep you safe yeah. from true intimacy, you know, real, someone actually seeing who you are. That's one one possibility. I'd love to hear, um, you know, I'd love to hear some people's uh, experiences with that. So the, the answer, I mean, how to turn this around, you have to go in and love yourself and heal yourself. Then that will be reflected back to you in the men you're yeah. attracted and attracted and, to. And, and men are just in the moment. They're in mm -hmm. the moment. And in that moment, he's crazy about you. And yeah. in that moment, there is wild chemistry. That's all well and fine, but I want to be a wife one day. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to mm -hmm. be a wife one day. And that needs to be like in your attitude and either we are moving in that direction or we are not. So men are in the moment, but it does hurt. It, it stings. You wish that you could have all of that, but one day you will. Totally. Yeah, totally. Will. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This will be the last one. Cause I know we're over on time. Can't believe there's like <laughs> 506 people watching live. I love Adrian. You are a uh, total favorite on my channel and this is so much fun. We got to do this more often. Um, we're good so, together. Helena. Yeah. We're good together. So, <laughs> uh, what program or reading do you recommend for dating? Also getting the guy you were dating to come back or manifest the ideal man that would be probably heartbroken to happily ever after that will help you either reconnect your relationship or attract somebody who's even better for you. Sounds That's right. Um, if you're just dating and um, wanting to find someone like new right from the start, find and keep the one without coming undone, you can get both of them for the special bundle price right here, everheartcoaching.com slash unzipped. You can also just click the link in the description and it'll take you right there. Um, get it while, while those are still on sale together. So this was amazing, Adrian. Thank you for staying with me over. I am so sorry about the work being done on the house. That was not supposed to be happening right now, but I just went with it. <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't too distracting. Um, but yeah. Yes. They're, they're in their masculine energy. Yeah. <laughs> they're making it, they're fixing it. it Hopefully it wasn't now, now that we're done, of course it's over. It's perfectly quiet, but, oh my God. <laughs> but this was amazing. We should definitely do this again soon. Check out our programs, check out Adrian's, uh, all her programs. Oh my gosh. The ABCs to get him back 500 ways to talk to a man, new man manifesto. I can include links to everything down below. Anything else you want to say, Adrian, before we close out? Well, thank you everybody again for, for being part of our life and showing up and we love to know that we're doing a good job. So please give this video thumbs up. You know, when you give a video thumbs up, it helps other people find this video. Make sure you subscribe to Helena if you're not already subscribed and subscribe to my channel too. We love you guys. We love helping you. Yeah. We're able to take what we went through. You know, Helena and I both went through some really tough times. Mm -hmm. We had, we both had physical problems. We share that in the unzipped collection. I mean, I was going on dates with a, a black eye that I had for nine months from surgery, you know, and, and Helena had some physical problems as well. So I yeah. just want everybody to know it's not all wine and roses. Our story is not just like, we're two, you know, cute brunette girls who happened to, you know, we had big trouble that you can all relate to. And the, oh, yeah. the fun thing is, is that, yeah. you know, we overcame these obstacles. We were able to learn a different way of speaking and being so that we not only affected our relationships with men and with everybody, but we felt better. A lot of our, you know, we both suffered with anxieties and different things. And that's the wonderful thing about feminine energy is that you are so in touch with who you are and you're not rejecting yourself. You know, a man, in order for a man to love all parts of you, you must love all parts of you. And that's what we teach you how to do. So thank you so, all for joining us. Thank you that. so much. Uh, 
Love that. I'm like dying. These comments are so sweet. It's like amazing. So um, you guys are so, so sweet. I could just sit here and read them forever. We could be here all afternoon. <laughs> but I'll go back and read. I will read every single comment. I promise. We love you guys so much. Adrian. thank you so much. Let's definitely do okay. another one again soon. Let us know what you guys want us to do next. Um, let me know down below in the comments after this post. And we love you. Have a great rest of the day and we'll see you soon. Thanks, Adrian. Bye -bye. So much fun. Bye, Helena. Bye, everybody.